Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. In today's episode, we're going to be continuing on with our VGC Series 8 content, playing another rental team, but this time from a viewer and we are kicking off our viewer rental team uh, episodes now so if i haven't featured your team yet and you have submitted don't worry i appreciate it so much and i will 100 percent promise to feature the team on the channel if you do send it across it may take me a little while to get it up initially i'm going to try and work through as many as i can but today we got a special one this is from ng vgc i i'm hope i'm pronouncing your username right but thank you so much for sending this across as soon as i saw it, i was like i've got to play this next on the channel because of a few reasons obviously uh ng explained that the the team itself is based off a 2015 vgc kind of archetype team called chalk which was consistent of cresselia heatran amoongus landorus and kangaskhan but obviously kangaskhan uh is probably not the best pokemon to play in this format i mean it's still a good pokemon but it's not a restricted so replacing the kang with the curum keeping that chalk title which is always good and then sticking the rotom on the end which is kind of a slot that was always interchangeable anyway you kind of saw thunderous there but rotom occasionally popped up on the chalk team so gonna be a lot of fun playing it today here is the rental code i'll throw it up at the end of the the episode again just to remind you after we've had a couple of games of the team see how it performs but i'm very excited to play curum black as well because it is a Pokemon that gets really overlooked. You know, Curum White is the probably the lead runner in that Curum family uh, for players that kind of jump on and use. But Curum Black, obviously, the, the physical variant, Ice Dragon type, uh, has a lot going for it. So it's going to be nice to kind of feature it today, see how it does. It's got some good utility with the, the moves that it's got, speed control, uh, that max Hailstorm as well, and the max Wormwind. So with the Life Orb, it's going to be hitting like a truck if we support well enough and i'm sure we can with the options that we've got on the team so like i said big shout out to ngvgc and everyone else who's submitting a team so far without further ado friends let's get into the first game of today okay up first today we've got fash playing a team of mimikyu gastrodon eveltal uh shifu tapulele and tyranitar so some interesting Pokemon here, lots of different things kind of going on. You've got Trick Room mode that could be there from the Mimikyu supporting things, predominantly like the Gastrodon and the Tyranitar. And then you've got a bit more of a faster mode with the Veltal providing that max airstream support there for uh, supporting the Tapu Lele, of course, and that Urshifu as well. The Urshifu obviously benefiting from the Dark Aura boost that the, uh, the Veltal is going to uh, have access to, along with the Tyranitar as well. So we've got to be pretty careful around that. Uh, the rock typing from the Tyranitar scares me a little bit, but I think Curum can do all right in this match. We just need to protect it like well enough. Um, so, Cresselia feels very difficult to bring in this match. Um, if Trick Room goes up, we got a Moongus, so we can kind of fall back on that. Um, I think we'll, we we definitely need Landorus. Definitely want Curum. I think Heatran's not bad in this matchup. Honestly, I want to have a quick check, remind myself what the uh, the move set on this Moongus is clear smog so that'll help if anything tries to set up i guess um do we want mm, yeah rotom's not rotom's all right but not yeah i think i think this fall will do the biz for us obviously in your kind of chalk teams you're generally looking at uh, the core of like cresselia heatran landorus always a very solid core uh, you can kind of wiggle your, yourself around it. M most combinations back in 2015 with it. Um, but obviously now dark types are a lot more uh, prevalent in the format as well as ghost types. So something like Cresselia definitely has a way harder time than it used to. Okay, we're going to see the Lele. The Lele. And the Mimikyu. So obviously Curum as well has a hard time against um, the fairy typing on the Lele. Uh... Kind of like it's kind of difficult leaving Curum in against these two fairy types, but we do have a Heatran in the back, so we're not in the worst situation in the world, are we? Uh, we could all we could always bring in Heatran, go Max Quake into something like the Mimikyu. The problem is, I do feel like we'll maybe see Willow Wisp here from the Mimikyu, which could be a little bit, um, a little bit awkward. Especially for the Landorus. Like, Heatran's going to be an absolute monster for us. If we can get it on the field now without taking too much damage. Um, Q 
Cure and Black. Thing is, it speed ties with Tapu Lele as well. Like, we could potentially risk it, but the thing is, the other option is just go Rock Slide. Rock Slide, break the disguise, kind of sack off. Yeah, let's do that. We've got this Salt Festival Lander, so we can take at least a hit. They may want to go for the burn on the Curum as well. That's the other option, of course. But it being the restricted Pokemon, it's kind of a big threat. But because you've got the fairy kind of stabs against it, you're not as worried against it, you know? So we are going to see the Lele Max. It's going to take advantage of its psychic terrain here. Or it might not. It might not. It might go for um, a big fairy type attack in the Curum. Potentially, I don't know. I don't know. I think it'd go off the Landorus though. It does go off to the Starfall, which is kind of better for us, uh, in all honesty, because they get rid of their Psychic Terrain, which is a just a big, big bonus for us, because the Lele now not boosted up, and it's a little bit of a counterplay for my opponent doing that, almost. Uh, there's the Will-O-Wisp into the Curum, so we catch that perfectly, that uh, Heatran switch is ideal for us, so that's that's super nice. Break the disguise, which is the the big thing that we want to do. Now, if you take a look at my opponent's team, um, hmm. because we still got the option where we could max Landorus, you know. Um, but we we are um, going to be affected by potentially getting burned this next turn, which is not which is not ideal. Um, we could just max. It's like whether we sack Amoongus or not. Because we could bring Amoongus in. It's got the Sash, so we've kind of got a little bit of protection there. And just flash cannon the Mimikyu and get rid of that. Because I don't want to pull the, I don't want to pull the max trigger just yet. For the fact that we've got Curum in the back. And it feels like Curum would be maybe a better end end game Pokemon. I'm going to see another Starfall. There we go, into the Moongus. So, uh, having the Fairy Resists really does help this team, you know? And there's the Will-O-Wisp, so. Uh, but they, they're obviously not really helping with the um, the Misty terrain up as well. A little bit unfortunate uh, that it's really, it's really detracting from what my opponent's kind of able to do with the Mimikyu. I mean, going for the Will-O-Wisp isn't the bad play because the Landorus isn't on the on the ground, so you could you could happily go for that. And you know, the play that they've made isn't a bad play because you cover a Curum Black switching with the the Starfall, and um, obviously if it comes in and survives somehow, somehow I don't see it ever surviving that. Um, then you've got the ability to. Uh, to burn it as well so it's a nice option gastrodon coming in obviously a, a, a big big problem for heatran um the earth power definitely going to cause us some issues we do have rage powder here but the problem is with rage powder we'll probably see um i think we could rage powder and get cure amount on, onto the field probably I, i'm feeling more and more like uh, landers might be the pokemon to max in this match um, but because we're gonna get a max mind storm into Amoongus here. Um, I'd imagine let's bring Landorus in. I mean, a scald here would be terrible, a scald here would be terrible, but I think the to go after the Heatran, uh, with an earth power is probably a little bit more tempting. It's a four times weakness, so we're just hoping. The match isn't over if Landorus gets caught with like a scald here, but it um get a little bit it will but get a little bit trickier for sure. Starfall coming out. Ooh. Run. Run after the Amoongus again. Huh. Unless you like really predict predict something coming in on that slot, I dunno. It's a little bit a little bit of a strange play there. Um, okay, well, now we're in a decent spot where we can, you know, what are we thinking's in the back? The Veltal has to be. The Veltal has to be, the, you know. Um, so, Curan Black didn't really struggle against the Gastrodon. It's just the, the Tapu Lele that becomes a bit of an issue for us. Um, so, we could switch in Heatran for Amoongus. And could just go for well we could go for max quick definitely helps us out a bunch it's probably not the the worst play in the world either because you know the thing is 
even if a Veltal's in the back, it's more than likely special. So the special defense boost is going to help us. And as much as I would like to force the Curum to be our max mon here, I think it's probably a little more sensible in this situation um, to max Landorus, you know. And like we are playing this to have some sort of like practical benefit. So just forcing and it's and, and having that fun side is fine. But sometimes you've got to be like, right, we, we want to pick up the win here. So we've got to make the, the better players to kind of be able to do that. So the Psychic coming out into the Heatran. And you can kind of see how this choke kind of call was was so good back in the day. You know, fairy types weren't as, as prevalent, but the fact is that the, the weaknesses really complement each other and they've got a really nice synergy between it, all of them. Obviously, water typing is a little bit of an issue. Uh, it's kind of mitigated a bit more in this format where you've got um, attacks like Max Quake, which can, can kind of help mitigate uh, the weaknesses to a certain extent anyway we do see an ice beam it does crit which is a little bit unfortunate but we're still not in the worst position the tapalele gone obviously makes life so much easier for um curum when it decides to to hit the field eventually as we see the the tyranitar make its appearance well 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 what are we gonna see Ooh. um hmm. <laughs> I kind of don't really want to hit the uh, the Tito with a big attack yet. We could just bring in Amoongus now. It's got a pretty easy ride. Um, and just go for a Max Quake into the Gastrodon. That'll uh, sure up our defenses a little bit more. And the Tito not really threatening Landorus unless it's got something like Ice Punch, which I really highly doubt it has. You've got kind of the ice coverage on Gastrodon, so it makes more sense to have... Uh, just your kind of standard set on Tyranitar, but you can never, you can never tell, can you? You can never tell. But we're um, we're able to to wrap this one up. Sad the Curum hasn't featured too much. Hopefully we can get it in before the end. Let's uh, let's force that. If we've kind of got this in a, a decent enough position, we can force the Curum back in. Maybe get that last knockout. That would be good. Uh, but the Gastrodon in a, a little bit of an awkward spot this next turn. Um. Breaking swipe coming out. It's a nice option, you know. It's not something you see too common, but you've got to give my opponent pro props for that, you know. It's uh, the attack uh, lowering effects of that are like invaluable. Um, another ice beam there, and uh, we would have had so much health, you know, if that first one hadn't crit. But I mean, that's just something we have to deal with. I think we could gear this up to. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, let's put the T-Tar to sleep and. Let's just go for another Max Quake into the Gastrodon at this point. There's not really any, any need to kind of change things up here. Um, I just don't really get the, the Tapu Lele's um, third Max Starfall. I can understand the, the, the second one. But sometimes, you know, you can't ever tell. You know, your opponent's thinking one thing. Um, and sometimes... It makes all the sense in the world to you as a player, but sometimes it's it's hard to kind of gauge that for yourself. Um, but so you can't really ever criticize something, you know, until you actually get to speak to the the person behind the uh, the driving the driving wheel, as we'll say. Okay, Landorus, you've done very well. Good Lando, good Lando, and I think because of chalk, you know, like <laughs> it sounds like really like I don't know, like it's a legendary so. You know, it shouldn't be your favorite Pokemon. Um, but Landorus is definitely one of my favorite Pokemon, along with Heatran. You know, I love the Chalk team back in, in 2015. It was it was, it was was like the team I played all season. And I was so close to getting... Um, I needed a paid trip to Worlds that year. I couldn't actually afford to pay myself to go. And I got my invite early on. And... Um, I, uh, I was very close. I was one match away from uh, securing my in my paid invite that year. So um, as it happened, obviously the season went on. If I if I got one place higher at UK Nats, if I got to top sixteen, no, I was top sixteen. I think if I got to top eight, that's that would have secured it. That would have secured it. But it didn't happen, and uh, it was against a good friend of mine, um, Sekium. So he managed to go instead of me. We've not really got the attacks to go after the uh, the Tito here, but we'll we'll dragon claw it. We'll dragon claw it. It'll be fine. We'll see how much a dragon claw, life orb dragon claw does. Let's be amazed. 
It does a lot of damage. Does a lot of damage. Okay, so we'll we'll, uh, we'll definitely take that. Wow, you know this is Titar as well. You know Titar's like got a huge defense stat. So yeah, but the team that's a four zero. So I mean, you can't complain. Uh, Ng, the team is great so far. So hopefully I don't let you down in this next one. But very good game to my opponent. And uh, with that, friends, we'll jump into our next match right now. Okay, up next today we've got Stefan playing a team of Kyogre Tornadus, Toxicroak, Mamoswine, Celesteela, and Incineroar. I love the inclusion of Toxicroak on this team. You've seen it on a lot of rain teams in the past, primarily with the the Tornadus, the Kyogre in 2019, and then obviously in previous formats as well, where the restrictors have been allowed to. 2016 and maybe not too much 2016 but definitely 2010 it was around and doing work back then so very interesting pokemon got the dry skin ability will take advantage of the rain has access to things like faker like sucker punch uh fighting type stab as well so and the uh, the poison which is all very good um okay so what are we doing against this team um i mean cress Press with the Trick Room potentially helps us out a bunch. I think we need Rotom in this matchup. Like, I'm not going to lie. I think Rotom has a great time here. There's not really too much other than the Toxicroak that can deal with the Rotom very well. So, I think Rotom, potentially in a, a, a strong position, can do a lot of work. I think, honestly, as well, Curum's not a bad shout. Actually, Curum Rotom might be all right. I don't know if I want to bring Crest to this one, in all honesty. I think maybe... Nah, Cress is good as like fodder. Uh, no, 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 no. Let's bring Amoongus and let's bring Landorus as well. Yeah, let's go with that. Let's go with that. Okay. Sorry, Cress. Not today. But Rotom definitely going to be the big player in this one for us. All about kind of supporting it in this game because there's not very much that my opponent's got that's going to be able to deal with it, especially if we can kind of get Rotom set up and in a nice board position. It's going to do so much work. Right. Especially with the, it's the lack of the grass type on my opponent's team that you normally see on the Kyogre builds, you know, something like Cortana, something like Rillaboom. It's just not there, so it makes Rotom's life so much easier. Now, we do get the Terra Vault, which is uh, just going to be useful, I guess, but, um, you know, the, the Intimidate's not ideal for us at all. But we're, not, we're still not in a bad position, you know. We can still free shock. We could still max and free shock the uh the tornadoes i kind of want to the other option is obviously going into amoongus here and then just protecting rotom because then the next turn we can get around the taunt from the tornadoes and just rage powder nasty plot and that probably is going to be enough to to deal with my opponent's team honestly um, we get one nasty plot, and I think we're in a good spot. We've got to obviously consider things like a uh, snarl or parting shot from the incineral that are going to slow us down a little bit. But at the same time, if they are relying on parting shot as their way to kind of weaken us, then it's a lot better because then we don't have the uh, the pressure of the the double kind of. Um, The double attack snarl so there's a fake up fake up protect kind of a strange first turn as well um you're not really getting much out of that um so we'll rage powder we'll rage powder i mean the other option is we don't need to rage powder but i do i do worry about a taunt coming out into rotom it is a little bit risky but like the overall kind of threat that rotom provides if you can stop that nasty plot from your side of the field even at the cost of maybe one of your pokemon it's probably worth it because of how much of a threat rotom is to this build and you can kind of like be able to get you just able to see that from team preview you know um okay the tornado switching out now this isn't ideal if we do see a snarl because it definitely slows us down but not too much We'll see what this Incineral goes for. Like a parting shot here would be ideal. So get that nasty plot up. Puts us on to plus two special attack. And there's a parting shot. So that's ideal. Yeah, like I say, um, better than the Snarl. This is why I really value Snarl sometimes, you know, because it gets around that redirection. And redirection is such a kind of a prevalent kind of support option in, in this format. But Mamo not sitting in the most comfortable of spots right now, you know. It's not really going to have a way to hit the Rotom for very good damage. Um, 
And Celesteela coming in. Okay, I mean, Celesteela is just a fodder now. I'm surprised we're not seeing... I am so surprised we're not seeing the Kyogre here. Um, we got the, the thing is we got the sash on Amoongus, so we can just go spore into Mama Swine. Uh, uh, no, we can't. We can't. Thing is, because we want to max lightning. We want to max lightning. We could spore the uh, Celesteela, of course, but it's probably better off us just switching. Yeah. Okay. Let's switch into. Let's uh, no. Let's switch into Curum. Let's max. Lightning into the Celesteela. Yeah, let's do that. The only electric resist that my opponent's got is like out on the field now, so we've got no worries about going into that slot and kind of wasting the max turn. So that's the, the nice aspect here. Um, I could have brought, I could have brought Landorus in here, but Amoongus is such a good target for those ice type attacks from Mama Swine, so it's not really the best idea, I would say, you know? Um, like the Intimidate, it's not really going to affect the Mama Swine either, so there's not really much benefit other than getting an Intimidate onto a Celesteela, but the risk there is just not worth it, because Landorus can be quite quite important for the late game, you know? Um, because they're going to be faster than most things, my opponent's team, we do see the Icicle Sphere, but it does miss the cure, which is a little bit unfortunate, but we would, uh, it's a neutral attack, you know, so, um, We'd still take a bit of damage, you know, so we're kind of fortunate in a way to uh, to avoid that. But we do deal with the uh, the Celesteela and take it down. Man, am I glad I didn't keep Amoongus in and I'm realizing that the terrains up on the field are going to disrupt my play. So imagine Spore in there. <laughs> oh my god, that would have been horrendous, horrendous. But we're learning, we're learning, we're getting there. Okay, the tornado's coming in. It is going to go for the tailwind here. It makes the most sense. I think we just go after the mama swine though now. Um, do we just free shock? Free shock the tornado and mamas go after the mammal? Mammal. Yeah, I think so. Because the mammal's likely to potentially max here, I think. Probably max. See tailwind. See max quake into the curum. We should take that. I'm hoping we do. But let's see, because obviously the special defense boost is going to help out the team to no end. Uh, but if we get our rain up here and the chip that we're going to, well, it's not going to be chip, but the chunk of damage that we're going to do with the uh, the hydro pumps always going to be useful. The freeze dry, if we're able to get it off as well, is going to pick up the knockout onto Tornadus, which is always good. And there is the Max Quake coming out full force from the mammal. It hits like a truck. But we do take it. We do take it because Kurem's just a beefy, beefy boy. So, that's useful, and especially if the Tornadus isn't sashed here, then um, it kind of would make you feel like the Mama Swine's probably, probably sashed. Animation here is very cool, although it is a two-turn move, so you want to use it. Oh my gosh, okay, well, there we go. Yeah, the Mama is, is sashed. I totally forgot. It's a it's a um, it's a two turn attack. So we're now in a, a rough position. <laughs> we're in a rough position where uh, Kurum has to. Uh, I was like, is that it? Is that it? Okay. It's a great max move. It's a great max move, but it's not so good if you are not maxed. So NG VGC, you'll have to forgive me. I've never used I've never used Kurum Black with this attack before ever. Power Herb's always a nice option on there to think about if you want that one turn attack. But if you'll if you'll find yourself maxing it most of the time, then it makes sense, you know. Um, this is just, it's just my kind of oversight here. Hurricane coming out and does pick up. So the Curum not really doing anything, which is a little bit sad. But we might actually have time for another match because this one's been pretty quick. Max Quake coming out because the Curum goes down. Uh, we'll be able to pick up the Mammal. And um, we're going to be able to, to move on quite quickly here, I think. so. And hopefully in this, the, the last one, we will have one more game. Hopefully in the last one, uh, we'll be able to see a little bit more of the Curum. The kind of matches haven't been super favorable for it because we've kind of had to be a bit more centralized around some other picks like, like the Rotom here. It's, it's like really pivotal. And um, in our first game, obviously, the Landorus was, was quite important to us as well. So, you know, for those reasons... 
And Kurum hasn't been like the center stage, but hopefully our next match is a lot more favorable and Kurum can uh, can shine, shine bright. So, yeah, we just rock slide, go after the, the, the Incineroar here. I mean, uh, they're gonna fake out the Rotom, aren't they? They fake out the Rotom, I think. I mean, you have to really. We'll just rock slide regardless. Uh, I'm not worried about. Uh, am I worried about? Am I worried about the Incineroar? I don't really want to get parting shot, so we'll go after that. The Tornadus isn't really too much of an issue for us, as long as we got Rotom, we're kind of fine. As a fake out, uh, we'll be able to break at least this Ash on this uh, Tornadus now with the Landorus, who tanks that Hurricane pretty well. Get the Rock Slide off. Doing some nice chunky damage and um, a Hydro Pump into. The Incineroar will be enough to take it down. And then we just got the Tornadoes kind of sitting there waiting. I'm so surprised though that we didn't see the Kyogre in this match. That is the big kind of surprise for me. Honestly, I just think, where's the Ogre? Because I think when you've got your Restricted, even though you may not feel super comfortable about bringing it in this matchup, it just makes sense to, you know? Like the thing with Torn Ogre is you get Kyogre in that Tailwind. And it's like it's chunking so much so many things, you know. Darkest Lariat coming out, but proccing that Citrus Berry. So the Intimidate helping us out a bunch. And the Rock Slide. Probably not going to get anything this turn. I think we'll be chipping down. We need that uh, Hydro Pump to come out onto the Incineroar. Like Thunderbolt's pro uh, not with the Citrus Berry. I was going to say Thunderbolt's probably enough there, but probably not. We probably need the, uh, the Hydro Pump. Hopefully we can hit through the Confusion. Come on. Come on, Rod. There we go. And you got your goggles on. This is a good Rotom. This is a very good Rotom. Uh, so we get the land, the Incineroar. And now, yeah, we just need one Rock Slide or a, a Thunderbolt. And we're good to go. So very good game to my opponent. Saying it a little bit prematurely here. You never know what could happen. We could just keep hitting ourselves in confusion. They could confuse the Landris now. And then all we got in the back is the Amoongus. It's going to take quite a few Hurricanes, though, to take down this uh, Rotom. Never mind the Landris. So we'd have to be hitting ourselves Quite a few times. Anyway, good game to my opponent. Uh, really nice to see uh, the team doing well again. And uh, we'll move on. We'll have one more game with the team before we wrap up today. we got time. Okay, up next today we have a Landorus, Lapras, Amoongus, Incineroar, a Zapdos, and a Zacian team. We've got the old Lapdog team up next. And um, going to be a nice one to go up against. Obviously a very solid team. Uh, the Zacian team scares me a lot uh so it just really puts on the emphasis how important something like heatran can be in this match because uh heatran landers are going to be pivotal for dealing with the zassian so we need to keep them as healthy as possible uh, for the end game and so that means we need to get around the lapras as well as we can um now what are we going to bring here do we want we want speed control i think so cresselia makes sense although cresselia is quite passive not really able to do very much and it's quite easy for my opponent just to kind of sit and throw attacks out at us whereas it might be better to have a little bit more pressure in a, a, like on our side of the field like a, a, the Rotom's nice uh, the one thing that pressures the Rotom I would say more than probably anything is the Amoongus so the Cure makes sense there uh, and then Lander is Heatran in the back and then we're just gonna have to be smart with how we kind of um switch around in this in this match and um and play the team uh, uh but zassian lead is is very awkward zassian lead is very awkward yeah it's like i need a moongus but i don't know if i've got room for it almost you always got room for a moongus there's never an, there's never an excuse i just really want the curum to do some work against like it can do work against the landers do work against the zapdos uh, it's just going to have a really hard time against uh, the Zacian, which we could potentially see. It'll be in the back. It will be in the back. I don't know if the... Um... Okay. Well, double Intimidate here is, is terrible. It's like the, the, the enemy for uh, Cure and Black because we're relying on that attack stat. So the first thing to think of right here is wh what we're going to switch in for the Cure. Um... Heatran makes a lot of sense, but also Landorus does as well. But the problem getting Landorus onto the field now 
is um I mean Landorus is, is good it just it means that our uh our intimidates out on the field and we kind of want to keep it in the back for when the the Zassian comes onto the field because if we're in a position where we don't have the switch straight away then Zassian becomes a big problem now do I nasty plot here or do I I think yeah uh, do I nasty plot Nah, because they have to fake out. They have to fake out the Rotten because the the, the Curum White's not really an issue anymore. I don't think you're worth Quake here with Landorus. I think if anything, if you max the Landorus here, you go max Airstream into this slot. So we'll see what my opponent goes for. Sword Stance could be really, really, really problematic here for us. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Um. Hmm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. We need the Curum back on the field, like ASAP. We really need the Curum on the field. Um. But I think. Ah, uh, we can't really. We haven't got. We haven't got the room now to go a nasty plot. But yeah, and we're just gonna get we're just gonna get parting shotted. That's the issue. Mm, okay, let's go, guys. Uh, let's just go hydro pump and switch. Or protect, or protect, or protect, because we're running out of time, which is not ideal. Now the lander is gonna max. It's probably gonna max quick into the heatran, which is why we would have been better off going for the lander switch. And although, like I said to begin with, I think they go after the rotom and go max hailstorm. Now this might work out all right for us if we don't see an airstream here. Then Curum can come in, and it will outspeed that lander, and we'll be able to bop it because all the intimidates out in the field now. Max Rockfall. Okay. Well, Rotom survives. Wow. Wow. I am very surprised at that. Okay. Rotom is a chunky, chunky washing machine. That is, that is a good, that's a good Rotom, that. And we get the Hydro Pump off. Doing some phenomenal damage. Is that a crit? Not even a crit. There we go. Come on, Rotom. That is some nice damage. Okay, this puts us in a decent spot. Because now, now we go Hydro Pump again, and now we switch in Landorus. And if we lose Rotom, we get the free switch into Curum. Um, uh, now, no, 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 no. Yeah, Hydro Pump into Landorus. We switch Heatran into our own Landorus. Landorus. Um, now this is where we want my opponent to go for the max quake into the Heatran, suspecting that we haven't got our Landorus, that we haven't brought it to this game, although it would be the most crazy thing not to with a Zassian on my opponent's team, where we need Intimidate, because it's like mandatory against Zassian, without it. The Landorus, ah. Uh... <laughs> the one regret I have is never getting a Landorus plush, you know? You know, I'm not a big plush collector but it's always like uh, it's always one I think ah, that would be a that would be such a cool plush to have it would be such a cool plush to have it is I'd say it's definitely in my top five all-time Pokemon going for that rock fall again where are we going going after the heat train this time that's a shame but it's not the end of the world it is not the end of the world because we're gonna get this hydro pump into the lander's pickup not pick up the knockout we're gonna get snarled again oh, oh flare blitz you doubling in on the Rotom how dare you Okay, well, it's still not too bad because we've got the option now where um, we can actually max Quake. Uh, we don't want to max Landorus though, do we? We definitely don't want to max Landorus. Uh, huh. Okay, well, mm, it's still not going to be easy because the, the, the problem is the problem the problem the problem is the incineral 
is untouchable here because of just parting shots out and cure them. Or it could get greedy and flare blitz onto us. And even though Landorus is super low health, right? We've got. Actually, max air streaming is the best option, but we're not going to get the Incineroar if we do that. Because then we get the jump on the Zacian when it comes in. But we need to do that. We need to do that. Yeah, we free shock. Ah, oh, no, no. We need to max. We need to max. If we're going to. No, we Dragon Claw. We max Airstream into Incineroar. Hope they switch it out, thinking that, yeah, that we're going to max quick into that slot. Perfect. Amoongus coming in. We like to see that all day. They get the Intimidate, but we've got the speed control now. We've got the speed advantage. So, uh, the Dragon Claw will get the, the Opposing Landorus. 100%, because they haven't Airstreamed yet. They've just max Rockfall twice. I know Landorus hasn't got the, m the most health. But, okay, they're max guarding, which is fine. That is super fine. But we can't let them get too many Intimidates onto us. That's the issue. Okay, Mungus. Mungus going down to the Sash, but it will go down. It gives my opponent the free switch into the land, the, uh, the Incineroar the next turn, which is not great, because then it means we need to target down the, um, the Landorus the next turn. Um, but I guess it does give us a switch out with Curum if we need to. But then the speed boost is kind of nice at the moment. Ah, uh, Zacian's coming in. Huh. Okay. Well. Um, what are you going to do? Are you going to switch Landers out to Incineroar? Protect the Zacian? Yeah, I think that's what they're going to do. <sighs> I mean, we could double up into Zacian here, thinking that the Incineroar is going to come in. It's just if we lose Landorus, right? I mean, Heatran's still... Oh, Heatran's going to go down to probably a close combat, right? Okay, let's Dragon Claw. It's Max Quake. Top. Let's hope it's enough. Yeah, here's the, the NC coming in. I think the Zacian probably protects here. And then they get the double intimidate. But this would make me think, right, well, the next turn, rather than staying in with, like, Landorus or maybe the Cure, maybe you switch out to Heatran. Yeah, that's it's kind of like, this is actually not too bad. Because then we get to preserve our, our, um, our Intimidate. We still do decent damage to the Incineroar, like, we still do good damage there. And we're still going to do a bit of chip to this Zacian as well, you know? And we still have the speed advantage on it. Or do we? No, probably not. I don't know. It depends on what speed Landorus is. If we're jolly, then yeah. But if not, then hmm. Because now they switch back into the Landorus. Yeah, now they switch into the Landorus. Now we need to switch into Heatran because they're going to Behemoth Blade into Landorus. So we're going to see the NC switch out. Oh, Zacian switching out. Huh. Uh, uh, and that's still... Um... Okay. That's not, not bad because as long as we've got Curum on the field, it kind of checks that Landorus. They're losing the speed advantage with Landorus isn't great, but I think the Intimidate in the long run is probably going to help us out a bit more. Fake out coming out, which is fine. That's super fine. That's super fine. That is super fine. Um, because now we get get the Landorus. The Landorus pinned is pinned now, unless we see the Zacian come in, which it could do for the Landorus. Uh, but we could Heat Wave as well at the same time. But we're going to Earth Power into the Incineroar, which should get it. Uh, and we've got Landorus in the back to come in and help the Incineroar. So all going well. We take down the Landorus. We get rid of the Incineroar. Yeah. And then the Zacians are not as hard to deal with. So the, the switching out of our Landorus pays off. 
As long as this other bar picks up the knockout, which it should do, it should do. Yeah, okay, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. Um, yeah. Because now, heat wave. Heat wave, twice, two heat waves, two heat waves. Or do we got earth power? It's a bit more safe. But, I think your heat waves, heat waves gonna do more damage. Um, we do have the speed advantage with Curum right now, so we, we're in a position, but we don't have the attacks with Curum where it can really do too much. Uh, so we will go for that heat wave. We'll switch in Landris, get it back down to neutral. I'm hoping that we're going to be able... I, Heatran should be able to take a close combat. Should be. <sighs> and if it's Sacred Sword, then obviously that helps out a little bit more. And if it doesn't tack into the Landorus, that's ideal because then we can just protect the Heatran the next turn, switch back into the Curum, and then we've got to switch back into... Um... Okay, they're going after the Landorus, which is fine. We lose Landorus here, but it's all right because we are going to get this Heatwave off. Single target as well, you got to think. Is it going to be enough? Come on, Heatran. Boosh, there we go. Come on, friends. We have done it. Excellent. Three for three today. Uh, NG with the team. Thank you so much. And for bringing not only this team to the floor, for everyone's enjoyment, but for giving me a lot of joy as well. You know, with Chalk, like I've mentioned, it was a big part of my season in 2015. Um, and it's very similar, obviously, with a lot of the, the build. We've got the Curum Black in there, obviously doing work, which is amazing. So, uh, yeah, thank you so much. As my opponent team and we'll jump over and remind you all of the rental code if you want to try this team out for yourself and before i forget friends this friday over on our discord we are hosting one of our weekly tournaments it's a friendly tournament but it is series a it's a great place for you to get weekly practice we are running them like i say weekly every single friday they'll be kicking off at 8 p.m utc time and they'll be running till 11 you'll have roughly enough time to do about 15 matches in total and we'll post the results afterwards in the discord with the uh with the usage stats from the pokemon that i've been using the tournament it's a really good resource and uh, if you want to get involved like i say the code to join the tournament this friday the 5th of march is up on the screen right now so i hope you enjoy it okay friends here is the rental for today's team and uh, once again just ng vgc thank you so much for providing this and for anyone else that is providing rentals at the minute i'm looking forward to featuring them all like i've said i will get through them as we go forward on the channel we've had some really good suggestions as well down in the comment section for other pokemon as well to feature galarian zapdos is one of them definitely something that i want to feature very soon um and we've actually got a rental team coming up very soon i think from jude that actually has the galarian zapdos in there so i will be making some teams myself and we'll be streaming obviously over the next couple of weeks so there's lots of teams to try out along the way over those different platforms so a uh, big shout out again if you try the team let me know i think you're gonna have fun with it it's a really cool concept it covers itself well and uh, chalk still strong Strong in series eight all these years later so uh big shout out to nicholas and uh once again have a great rest of your day friends thank you so much for tuning in it's been a great episode today so hopefully you've enjoyed it and i'll um i'll catch you all for another episode very soon so until then friends take care of yourselves and bye bye